All right, this short clip is of us annealing the ring that goes around the axle. The ring had worn out and uh, had worn on an angle, and we had to build it up, weld build it with a 7018 electrode. And what happens when you weld the malleable cast, the carbon content goes into the weld and it makes it super hard and we can't machine it. So we have to run it up to about 1530 degrees and put it in a, bury it in the sand and let it cool overnight so we can come in tomorrow and machine it back and make it true. So this is a little video of us annealing the ring. Okay, in this video, this is another one of those axle rings that's been built up by weld, but we had a little dilemma when we put them onto the forge to heat them up to 1500 degrees. What had happened was the uh, we couldn't control the heat very well so the oils in the casting had blown out and pitted through and blew holes into the casting when the oil was expelled out in the t high temperature. So to rectify the problem, we'll go outside here and we made a little oven to put them in so they were not directly on the fire. And here you see our heat treating oven, annealing oven, and we will heat them up so far we're only at 450 degrees and climbing. So we'll get up to about a thousand, take that out and let it coast a little longer. Get them up to temperature and then bury them in the sand. So inside there is one of the rings all built up and we'll anneal it so I can machine it tomorrow. It's just a video to show the progression. We do make mistakes sometimes and you can't just throw them on the forge direct on the coals because it's a little too hot and it, it blows the casting out a little bit. So there's a progress so far on ASL 100 axle rings. Alright, what we're doing here is uh, making nice wool waste pack journals. So what I'm doing is we're soaking this in oil and then wringing it out, pack it down inside here. Why are you wringing it out? Well, now they're completely soaked with oil. So I'll take a look in here. It's... But don't you want it totally saturated with oil? I want it somewhat saturated with oil, but not totally saturated with oil. If it's too saturated with oil, then uh, it will compress itself down under some pressure, and then uh, it will become completely ineffective, and it will flop around and want to have as much of this in contact with the surface of the, of the bearing as possible, keep it as cool as possible, and keep as much oil in there as possible. So, so we're looking at a little different consistency here. This is, this is still fairly well saturated. If you see if I squeeze that, all that oil comes right out. That's, that's, that's pretty good. We might have to work on that a little bit, but uh, we're getting there. All right, very good. All right, I think we're recording. This is a test run. Let's see how it works. The situation is here, we got to put pins in these bearings and the problem is these bearings are out around on the on the pinholes. Get a close up here of what's going on. If you see the pins, the bearings are too out around. Also in the journal box, the bearing holder, the holes are the same. So, I'm attempting to make a movie here, this is serious business. <laughs> So, where was I? This is the bearing holder. We got to drill these, fill these egg-shaped holes with weld, and re-drill them out. So, this is a semi-precision operation. So, I'm going to crank my table here and find the center line of the hole. Now, it doesn't have to be necessarily 100% accurate because, thank God, Charlies are forgiving. There's a lot of resilience in them. So I'm going to drill out the first hole, just to make sure I'm on center and everything's lined up right. Clean it, clean it out. You want to have a nice, pretty start to work. All right. Now, what we do there, Punch the first hole. Now I'm going to 
gonna come over, I'm gonna weld fill it. I'm gonna go against every shop teacher's curse of the world by welding on a machine. Maybe my shop teacher will forgive me. Mr. Heminger from Beatty Technical School in Pittsburgh. All right, so I'm gonna weld this hole up. This is a 7018 electrode. the grease out of it. Now, I'm going to punch it back through again. And that'll make us a good bowl. So that's all we really need for the tip to sit in. I don't need to plug, weld it, and fill it, and re-drill it. Alright. Then I gotta drop it down. I do one hole at a time. Why? Because that's the way my brain works, I guess. That way I can keep myself in check. So I'll drop the table down. Unfortunately, I don't have power to feed table. My workbench is trash. Ream it out. Five eight sold. Start on the back because it's a little cramped. But once I break through it, it'll drop in. This is the interesting part because these are brass bearings. And I had a hard time raising them. I couldn't get enough heat in it with the oxygen assembly torch. And in tripping in the back, there were some copper electrodes for ferrous and copper-based alloys. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And uh, believe it or not, the arc welding of brass is a success. So let me grab a few electrodes. Of course, they don't have very many of these, so I've got to be sparing on them. Look at the rod oven. It's a little hot. So, now, welding copper is really interesting. I've got about 50 amps on this. And all I do is fill in the, the hole. Get the egg shape out of it. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera or not. thought that brass would actually stick well, as you can see. Closes up pretty good. So, that takes the egg shape out of it. So let me spin around and get the other side. I would have never thought it.
little hole. Let's see if you can see that. All right. So that's how it looks. This one. the dingleberries off it. All right. Same thing for the front hole. Set it up. Again, semi precision. Go down. Clean out the bottom, get the old paint out. That's it. side at a time. This side is welded up, this side isn't. Down there. Shut up my hole again. This one in. We've got a true hole again. I don't know if that comes out in the camera or not. So, we lost its egg shape. Now we got 
that it could fit within tolerance. I'm going to turn around and do the same for the front. And this one, weld fill it. Set the end mill, put the bearing in, and join them together. All right, in this video, we took the axle rings that go in ASL 100 and built them up with weld. What had happened is they had worn on an angle, and you can't quite tell from this where the angle was, and I didn't take a video of it before, but I got pictures of it. And weld builded the surface back using a 7018 electrode and since this is malleable cast we had carbon migration in the weld which caused it to become very very hard tool steel hardness so what we had to do in another video I think you'll see we're annealing the ring in a forge and we tried to run it up to about 1530 degrees and bury it in the sand overnight to make it machinable and there's the first pass that we that I made in the and facing off this ring to make it true again. So this is just a quick video showing the ring in its pre-repair stage, if that's even the correct word to use or not. And I'm going to use a fly cutter and surface the face off. And then at that point we have to split the ring in half and cut in here across here to bring the ring closer together so it squeezes down the axle tighter because they're also worn out on the inside of the circumference. So there's just a quick video showing what we're doing on ASL 100. Okay in this video we're coming up on the final cut. I'm going to take about the last 20 thousandths off of it and uh, see how it looks after that and we should be able to do the finishing work on it. Grind her down a little bit, clean it up, and uh, go from there. Start on the next one. Same process over. Weld build it, and then machine it down. Get the, the crookedness out of it. So I'll just do a quick video here on this. Do a little bit of the sheeting process. Five minutes to go around, so I'll cut it short because uh, it's probably pretty boring. I don't know if I was watching, I'd get bored. video there. 